race fans, welcome to Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you by ShortTrackExclusives.com. I am your host, Thomas Battis, alongside two other Short Track Guys and good friends of mine, Jim Pokrant, driver of the 07 CantQuitFishing.com Sportsman, here locally at Five Flags Speedway, and Ted Baber, Ted Baber Video Productions, also locally here at Pensacola, Florida. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Greetings and permutations. Good evening. Let's get this done. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah, well, uh, this is episode four, and um, we're going to recap uh, what happened Friday night. We had uh, the modified the Mayhem. We had the Prolate Model 100. But first, Jim, uh, your sportsman race going after maybe trying to get that first victory of the year. How did, how did that turn out Friday night? Well, we qualified third, um, about a tenth off the pole, so that was pretty cool. Had a good car, started third, run third for the majority of the race, and finished there. Um, I caught, and he did a hell of a job racing last night. Maddox, uh, the other night, Maddox Langham, uh, his brother Jonathan, and his dad Howard. I've raced against both of them for years. The kid drove a hell of a race. I mean, he held me off, and I, I could have been a dirty sob and put a bumper to him, but I'm not that kind of driver. I race him clean. The kid raced me hard. It was a lot of fun. We wound up third, another podium finish. Um, my team figured up that's 13 regular season races and 13 podium finishes with a win and a bunch of second places. I know to some people, second place is the first loser, but I don't look at it that way. We're having fun with an old race car and an old motor and an old driver. Yeah, and uh, you end up uh, you 22 points behind now after five races, and uh, you're going to go back on June 4th with the first Blizzard race. And the sportsman and pure stock. So what are you doing in the meantime to get ready for that event? Uh, I got to grease some bushings, uh, take the rear end uh, trailing arms off and clean them up. Uh, probably do the front end the same way, reset the front end, put it on a set of scales, see if we can't get it to change a little bit. We made some adjustments and I tried some different stagger and it worked really well. But, you know, like I said, Maddox was just driving the wheels off that thing and he held me up for five laps. So I... And like I said, I got respect for the kid. I couldn't move him out of the way. Now, I hate to say this, but if it had been for the win, he would have got moved. Because uh, that first place trophy would have meant a lot more than the second place trophy that I would have got by moving him. So, But he knows he's a good kid. They're hard racers. And uh, we're just going to make some different adjustments. And uh, we're trying to get the money together to get our motor freshened up. Because the motor's got six seasons on it. It's starting to show signs of age and getting tired. So uh, we're working on that, too. Yeah, you got the sponsors all involved. They kind of pull together and do some different things with some improvements. Yeah, it's it, the motor has to be fresh, and it'll go to Coastal Engine and Machine, and he'll go through it and make it all new inside again. But uh, it's a good motor. It's been a good one. I, I mean, I'm not complaining about it at all. It's still competitive. I'm pretty much the fastest second-place car right now because Brandon Fowler has just got us covered. That's all I'm going to say about that. There's there's some <laughs> aggravation there, but I'm not going to get into that here. But he's a good driver. He's got a good car, and we're going to do our dangness to beat him. Yeah, you just got to stay at it, right? That's it. Got to keep digging. Well, yeah. Ted, Ted, you were there that uh, that Friday night, too, as you are pretty much all the time. Oh, but yes. um, what, uh, from your perspective, uh, how, how was the racing? How was the attendance? Uh, I watched the battle between uh, Jim and the maddox and it was epic there for a while and you know i being a, a sponsor and a real fan of gyms i'm like would you just go on and do something about this but i know like he says he's not that kind of a driver and we don't want to get in that kind of situation because the langham's been around for a long time they're good drivers it, it is what it is you just you know you, you have to be patiently aggressive sometimes you know, you hear that from a lot of drivers, with whether class it is, it doesn't matter, low level, high level, everything in between. You Sometimes you've got aggression, but sometimes you have to be patient, right. which patient is always the key in everything, I think. But um, you got to you put the hammer down to it and try to get through it, but you also got to keep your eyes open, too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's it's not worth tearing both cars up, either. That's no. That's the other thing. You know, I get into him, he gets into me. We both go in the fence as two tore up race cars battling for second place. It hurts me in the points, hurts him in the points, and it hurts a lot. So it was just the smart thing to do would be was just to finish third the other night and drive it back on the trailer in one piece and take it home and try to make it better for next week. Now, I had some scars on the front end. Now, I did bump him a couple of times, and I got in the left rear, but I just I couldn't. I didn't have the heart to do it to that kid. He's such a good kid. Yeah. Well, that's good. You guys are having fun. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, how do you measure success when you're finishing second, third, second, and third, and you're only 22 back, and you've got, like, the car out front that you're trying to knock down. Everybody else behind you is trying to do that to him, too. So there was a comment made on the uh, on the announce from the announce booth that said, if that double zero wasn't there, we'd have a great race for the lead. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought about that, too. I, I Like I said, if it had been for the win, I'd have had to give him no heave ho and, you know, he could have finished second. And did he start in the back and do what he did? He started on prior? the outside pole. Due, due to the luck of the draw and qualifying, we, we he rolled a five. And it's five positions. The double zero was on a pole. I qualified third, so I didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Daryl McDonald the third got down in front of me, and then he got real loose, and I got around him. And I was probably about five or six car lengths back from Maddox, and I ran him down. Yeah. And like I said, it would have been easy to put a bumper to him, but I raced him clean, and it was a lot more fun. And we crossed that star finish line to that checkered. I had to take a deep breath because I I caught myself holding my breath because it was just such a hard battle it was but, epic <laughs> yeah but their, their kids are i mean no I, i've raced against like i said his brother his older brother jonathan i raced back in super stock against howard they'll race you hard but they're pretty much fair you know yeah. they they don't they i've you know never seen wreck anybody intentionally you know what i mean yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's not worth wrecking the car and tearing it up and having to fix it and everything so no. It's so accidents. Much more accidents happen, but intentionally doing something, I don't know whether I don't think anybody really is intentionally done. Well, I can't say that either. No, <laughs> no, <I'm just>, uh, <laughs> there have been I can, intentional I can think of a couple oh, I, I situations. Can, yeah, I can think of a couple that I've actually intentionally put a bumper to, and there was some, well, the, the gonna... race that, that Ted was talking about when he first noticed me was the '99 <laughs> or 2000 Snowball Derby. I can't remember what year it was. 2000. And it was, it was 2000. Yep. And um, this dude, and they called him Stick. I ain't going to say the rest of his name, but he was driving a car that he'd never been in, and he was mirror driving me, running me into the ground, infield. He was running me up to the wall. And finally, I had enough of him, and I picked him up off the ground about the flag stand and dumped him into the front stretch wall intentionally. <laughs> I expected to get black flag and didn't get it for that one. I got a steering wheel thrown at me. That was that was pretty uh, interesting. Yeah, that's a new one on me. Yeah. <laughs> Souvenirs. Right. Yeah, and then, then when I came down after the race, because I, I drove from 17th up to, I think, a second or third, and uh, somebody, I had to let my window down. I was turning into the infield, and somebody hit me in the side of the head with a dirt clod, so that was an, another... <laughs> More first news. for me, you know, but I, I've, I've done it a couple of times. I had somebody wreck me intentionally, and I had, going down the back straightaway, I turned him into the outside fence at a slow speed, nothing, you know, I didn't do like a, I don't know if you fellas saw that dirt track late model race where the dude hit the guy head on wide open. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, you don't do stupid stuff like that. You can just turn each other around, be mad at one another, that's fine. But, man, I've seen people just intentionally run head on into somebody, and that's crazy. It's a lot better. You're a lot better off if both cars go on the trailer and you can concentrate on making them quicker the next time out rather Very than true. having to fix them. Very true. And I, yeah. I've let the anger get the best of me before, but I try real hard. Now, the older I get, the more I realize how much that hurts, you know. <laughs> but as far as your, your butt and back and everything else, you got to kind of take your lumps. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's just something a part of racing you're just going to have to, you know, live with. But um, we're not going to worry about that right now. You can get your car fixed up and get ready for the next race on June 4th, which we got the Blizzard race. We're going to get to that in, in just a little bit. But I want to back up a little bit for Friday night um, with the Modified to Mayhem. And if memory serves me correctly, I think we brought up a subject with uh, some guy from Texas in the Modified that was coming over to test the Super, but... He Casey came over Smith. specifically for the modified race, and that was Casey Smith. Yeah, he wore him out, son. He sat on a pole and just nobody could touch him the entire race. That that was embarrassing. If I was running second to him, he was long gone. That was it. But I mean, like I said, that dude can wheel five flex speed, but he's come so close to winning a lot of big races and uh, had some bad luck biting him. But boy, the other night he had him covered. Yeah, it was Casey Smith and then Augie Grill from Hayden, Alabama, and then Cody Strickler. It was the top three, and um, Ted, if was you it mod right. modified a mayhem? Was it a mayhem, or was it, it? It was, there was a lot of that going on, definitely, and, and when you outrun Augie Grill, you have accomplished something in any class, but modifieds especially, oh my lord, the dude, he's got it together, but Casey Smith just left him. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Casey Smith was driving a BMF chassis 
which was the same thing Augie was Augie ran because I believe Augie mentioned that it was cool that two of his cars finished one too. Or I don't think Augie builds them. I think he just drives the modified for a guy or helps the guy. Oh right. Yeah, but it's it's BMF chassis. Don't ask me what that stands for. Right. I don't know. Nobody will. Right. Well, it's 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 different than the Gark. Yes. The Grand American Race Car, right. which yes. the grills with Frankie, you know, uh, and Augie have been notorious for throughout the years and a lot of traditional history. Yes. Combined. Well, it started that started as uh, Neil Bonnet race cars originally. Really? Yeah, the uh, Frankie Grill worked for Neil Bonnet and they built race cars cuz there I'll never forget, I got a Snowball Derby program somewhere. It said, look at the stars in Neil Bonnet race cars. And then uh, uh, Frankie Grill, I think, bought Neil's part out or, or after Neil passed or whatever, and it became Grand American race cars. Well, it's, uh, they're going to come back. Well, they got five races this year, I uh, guess? I think so, yeah. I'll have to check back up, but I think they come in uh, for five, and that was their first one on Friday night. And right. Congrats to Casey Smith, and wish you all the best of luck with that super, and, and we'll get into that, which we're going to bring up some other names coming up with the Blizzard race on June 4th. Yep. Um, but now the Pro Late Model 100, uh, we had a young gun, and we've gone through in uh, previous episodes with the youth and experience with Jake Garcia and uh, Kyle Plott, and our man Chris Davis in Pearl in Texas comes Wound in here third, and finishes yeah. third. So um, how, how, how did that race end up? It was pretty good. I, I tell you what, man, that kid in that 35, Jake Garcia is also a uh, protege of um, uh, Chase Elliott, and that kid wore him out. So and he, if it hadn't been for that caution, I don't think that it ever caught him. And then on the restart, they had a little wiggle go on, and uh, Conroe Kresic got the lead for a second, and then Kyle Plott got out there, and Jake Garcia ran him down like it was nothing and went around him like he was tied to a pole. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Chris Davidson is def- defending uh, – uh, Alan Pro, Turner, yeah. Pro Late Model Champion. Right. And that dude is a hell of a race car driver. He's fun to watch. And Mike Garvey works on his stuff. And it's a, it's a Seneca car. Yeah. So he, Dave, I like watching Chris. There's some good guys in that Pro Late Model division. But I'm going to tell you something. Jake Garcia handed it to him, son. He he put a whooping on him, I'll tell you. <laughs> that was extremely exciting to watch. That, that restart, it got so mixed up. I didn't know where to look. It was just something going on everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting in my car trying to get buckled in and all while that was going on, I'm trying to watch that and strap in my race car. <laughs> it was something to watch. I got to tell you, I, I didn't know. I, I don't know how in the world they got that messed up and came out in one piece, but they did. They kept yeah. it together. And also a shout out to Robert Loper who won the uh, pure stock feature and yeah. his teammate finished second. And then um, I can't remember who finished third in that race. But they put on a pretty good show. And, and a shout out to my buddy Ben Cranford for his first eighth place finish on the lead lap in the pure stock division. He's a good friend of mine. His car number is 343 for the 343 firemen we lost in 911. In case anybody wants to know, that's why that car is numbered 343. I, I thought that was really cool because, you know, he stands with us. We, we support our firemen and our police. Yeah, that so. is that is cool. If it turns out Parker McDonald finished third here on the podium oh, again. Oh, McDonald, so. the Mafia, the Muffler again. Mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those guys. Let me tell you. That, that is a fun – you want to talk about some guys to go hang around and have fun? <laughs> man, those guys have a blast, man. Do- Daryl McDonald, Parker McDonald, all them, they're, they're good people. Part late models will be back on August 20th, along with Sportsman and Pure Stock, with all those guys we've talked about with Jim, and um, they're going to get ready for June 4th. Um, and Jim's going to get his car buttoned up and see if he can't go after that first win of the year. Um, we've got the Supers yep. coming up uh, June 4th, and a lot of the guys that we have talked about, um, the Augie Grills, uh, the Steven Nassies, the Jake Garcias. Uh, Casey Smith will be here. He's no. tested a, pro, a Super, so he should be here for that race. Yeah, I hope so, because then I can go ahead and say, you know, he's going to be up front. If top five, maybe he's got a chance to win it. Um, and I do believe that Bubba Pollard is on that schedule, too, to, to be there on the 4th of June. It'd be no. good to see him back. Yeah, it would be. He's the man to beat at Five Flag Speedway. I've seen him run those 100 lappers and qualify like eighth, and then it's just like the Jaws. You hear the Jaws theme when he's coming down about, darn it, darn it, darn it. He just starts eating up the leader. He's just he's awesome at Five Flag Speedway and would have won the Blizzard race if Nassie had in the, tur- the yeah, Blizzard series. Not Blizzard, I'm sorry. Alan Turner, 100, uh, going into turn three. Old uh, Stephen Nassie decided to pick him up and turn him, so... Well, I mean, racing is racing, right? Oh, yeah. Beating and so, banging is part of it, but... 
You just don't turn my boy Bubba. I'm not going to be happy about it. I'm just going to tell you, that's, that's my driver. Yeah. Yep. He is the only Bubba in racing. That's right. Way. That's right. There's, there's a Daryl Wallace, and I, I think they call him something similar to that, but he's not. No. <laughs> no. I think they're mispronouncing it. Really. I, I think so, too. I think they're mispronouncing it's Bubba Daryl Wallace. Yes, yeah. Daryl, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. As long as we're, you know, throwing all these, you know, like, big names out, uh, super late models, pro late models, I, I've got a uh mentioned something that um we went through uh saturday night down in south florida the sunshine state racing page on facebook uh at 417 southern speedway they had the super late model 100 there were 16 cars and two i think uh didn't start but um had jesse dutilly michael goddard wayne anderson um and they really really had a great show and a, a really Big shout out to Jennifer Brinson for for doing that uh, live on Facebook and having fans and responding to them through the texting, you know, the messaging. And it's just a really good show. And I've, I've seen it several times and um, I enjoyed it. It almost made me feel like I was at the racetrack. So thank you, Jennifer uh, or Jen, as they call, um, for doing it. And we look forward to, uh, you know, meeting and um watching more of it uh, i don't know if you guys have heard of that or have witnessed it but uh it was really good and, and i just wanted to get a mention out to it that's cool I, I i've watched some of the racing from down there and it's a good show and jesse dutilly let me tell you something he came up here last year and won a super race or maybe it was a couple years ago but he's always competitive uh everybody knows wayne anderson's a snowball derby winner and, uh, you know, all those guys you mentioned are tough, man. They, they come up here and run good. So I look forward to some of those guys being here for the Snowball Derby. And that's cool that she does that Facebook Live because there's uh, several people that do that. And, uh, there's somebody that does it from uh, Op. You can watch the races uh, live on Facebook. Yeah. So I, I think it's pretty cool that people do that. So you can watch it other other venues. It is, and I hope they just continue to grow and, uh, you know, bring more of those races to, you know, fans that can't be there or they're, you know, eight hours away. So shout out to that. And, um, Ted, what yeah. uh, what have you got going on this uh, this next race? And the same old thing, going to be up there shooting it and having a good time, watching it, participating as best as possible. And hopefully uh, filming me win so I can, well, you know, get a bit, another DVD of – you know another win so I, there I, is that i enjoy having those it's it's fun every once in a while to sound and watch yourself win a race <laughs> always nice to look back yeah it is ted ted does a great job and uh him and his partner up there daryl do a great job shooting the races man it's it's so cool sometimes to watch yourself when you win and when you get on the front stretch and hear the crowd reactions so it's it's fun yeah it's always good and what are what is there what is the racetrack surface like now Still rough as a cob, and uh, they they're still adding patches here and there. I, I be honest with you, I would hate to see that place get paved because it's such a great racetrack, and you know we're so used to it being rough and a tire destroyer, and it makes racing much better. If they pave it, it'll just be fast and blistering tires, and won't be any fun to race on, in my opinion. Okay, so after after an event. Um, whether it's a regular season event or maybe it's a special event or you're traveling out of town, you bring the car home. When you get through, and we've gone through this in other episodes with the tech segment, and the tech segment tonight brought to you by ShortTrackExclusive.com with Jim Pokrant. What When you take that car home, what what are your procedures after the event's over? Well, usually uh, unload it off the trailer and, of course, unload the truck, put the trailer up. Then I put the car in and uh, usually vacuum it out, get all the rubber dust and any kind of debris out of the car, put it on jack stands, pull off the tires and wheels. Uh, then you go through the brakes, make sure everything's looking good. You look for any leaks in the drivetrain, anything abnormal. Um, and then uh, basically put on the battery charger and make sure the battery's good. And then I usually run through some of the electrical stuff, check the shifter, and then I nut and bolt the entire car. I grab 10 wrenches and I crawl under that thing and every nut or bolt I try to put a turn on. Um, we have a rule this year that if you lose a chunk of lead, it's, I think it's 10 pound, $10 per pound or something crazy like that. So it's, it's pretty expensive if you, uh, lose a chunk of lead. So I check all my, my spots where I bolt my lead on, make sure that's all tight. 
This week we're going to have to pull the trailing arms off and re-grease all the rear bushings because that needs to be done. Same thing with the front end. I'll take a grease gun and go over everything. And then I, I, something I do different than a lot of people don't do, I don't run cotter pins in my uh, control upper lower control arm bolts, my ball joints, none of that, because I check it every week. And if it come, it's coming loose, that means the ball joint's bent or there's a problem, I replace the ball joint. It's just something that I normally do. Try and pack the wheel bearings every other event. Um, every third race, the car gets an oil change. Um, it's tedious. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful. And one of the reasons why I don't race dirt is because the, before that, before you, right after you take it off the trailer, you got to put it on jack stands and you'll spend about the next day pressure washing all the mud off of it before you can bring it in the shop and go through the procedures I went through. Nothing against dirt. I love it. Love to watch it. It's just not for me. But yeah. Well, how much how much weight do you think a dirt car picks up throughout a race when you get to like if you had to put it on scales and weigh a certain amount how much do they take out of that accumulates in the car sometimes upper to 20 or 30 pounds i, I can remember when i was a tech official at flomington speedway guys would go out and pack the track in and keep coming across the scales until the car made weight i'm not <laughs> kidding i had guys that would go out there and they'd pack track and they'd come across scales and they'd look at the numbers and they'd take off and go out there and Pack the tracks morning, come into it. I'm like, dude, you realize some of that's going to fall off during the race. I, you know, that, that car can gain anywhere 20 to 20 pounds, I would imagine. And depending on the type of clay, if it sticks. I mean, some of these clays, like over in Mississippi or Alabama, that clay sticks to the car and you may not get it off with a pressure washer. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's cool. It, it, and to me, it's relaxing to work on the car. I get out there in the shop, turn the radio on get the creeper out and just go to work, you know, and it's, it's procedure because you don't want anything to fall off. You don't want to have any problems. And if you don't check everything, you're going to have a problem. I mean, I recommend like I do, I make a checklist and I check everything off and then I know I'm done with what I need to do. And, and the old girl's ready to go again. Yeah. Ted, you have uh, that kind of problem with the GoPros and your camera and everything. <laughs> no, they usually, the stay in, <laughs> they usually stay inside. My biggest problem is rain or moisture. I actually had a camera that I just bought, mm -hmm. got some moisture in it and it just spent like 200 bucks on this camera, you know, low budget camera, but got some moisture in it somehow and died. Didn't even get to use it. Didn't get to put a card in it. it well, you know, it. the other thing, Ted, is you got to have people that actually remember to turn the camera on. Yeah, that does yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my shout out to my crew member, Will. Hey, he's down right now. He had shoulder surgery and he's the one that normally turns my camera on and, and we miss him and we'll get better soon. And also a shout out to Bill Melvin. He uh, is having some heart trouble. We understand he's uh, he's a modified a mayhem racer. Yep. And we're thinking about him and also uh, Boris Jerkovic. Um, man, dude, uh, that wreck with that other guy, David, I can't think of his last name, but we're praying for both of you guys because that was an awful, nasty crash. Yeah, you don't you don't want to see you don't want to see events that go down like that. And that was that was a, a hard lick that both of them took. Yes. And um, wish them both a speedy recovery and um, hope to see them back on the track. And hopefully at uh, Five Flags Speedway, maybe if you're a blizzard race or a perlate model of Snowflake, Snowball Derby, whatever. But uh, you guys get healthy and uh, get back in the car. Amen to that. I, I just would like to know what happened because, I mean, it, the wreck was over. And I, I, I hear, I don't know how true it is, they haven't officially said that the other driver may have had some health issues and, or the throttle stuck or something because I'm going to tell you something. That was... Boris had rolled forward like he got the car refired, and that dude comes sailing in there. And I mean, it was David Fritz. Was Fritz his last name? I think so. I, yeah, Fritz. I, I think that sounds right. I think so. Yeah, that was that was awful on both of them. I, I'm you know glad they're both not hurt worse than they actually are. Thank goodness for safe race cars and equipment. Right. And yeah. That's something you you don't want to compromise on. You never want to compromise on safety. You have people that. They go out there even in practice without gloves on. That's just... Yeah. Well, that, that's like that guy at Anderson Speedway in that bad fire a few weeks ago, run over something that busted his fuel cell. And that dude sat in fire. And I, I recommend more than a one, at least a two layer fire suit, a good set of gloves, driving shoes. Yep. Head sock is your call. I don't wear one, but I wear a neck collar. Um, head and neck restraint if you can afford one. Uh, just, but I mean, as far as fire is concerned, I mean, you got to remember your hands. You have to unbuckle and get out of that car with your hands. Okay. You can't do that when they're on fire. Wear some good gloves. I buy at least two layer gloves. I got a two layer fire suit, and fire scares the heck out of me. I don't. I don't. I don't know anybody that likes fire, so it 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 really worries me. And then to see that guy sitting in that ball of flame was scary. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, 
A fire suit is hot. Sitting in a car on fire is a whole lot hotter. Oh, yes. And a single air suit don't do anything for you. So the bottom line is just don't skimp on safety, for sure. Because you, you want the belts, you want the helmet, you want the gloves. You know, if you have the Hans device, the neck collar, whatever, fire uh, the shoes, the suit, and everything, just don't skimp uh, on it. Uh, uh, two of the scariest incidents I ever saw were uh, Cody Carl and Troy Grisafi and Justin Bonnet's fire in three and four. Oh, and, God, uh, yes. Yeah, those were horrible. Well, Justin Bonnet, you know, he hit that other late model and the fuel cell broke out and busted his windshield. And then with a busted fuel cell dumping gasoline, racing fuel inside the car onto Justin Bonnet. Yeah. He's really lucky he wasn't hurt worse than, than he was. And I thank God for uh, one of the Brooks is uh, Russell jumped in the car and helped get him out. Without any uh, thinking of his own safety, he got him out of the car. He had a broke leg, but, man, that was just a freak accident, the Justin Bonnet one. And the one with Troy Grisafi was, you know, because he has, he has problems walking. Right. And, you know, but, I grabbed my fire suit and my gloves and took off running because I thought if nobody's going to get him out, at least I can try to help. Yeah, he has, uh, I think as a result of a motocross racing accident, that he has his difficulties. But that was... <laughs> I we uh, I look back at the uh, camera shot of that. The camera automatically irises down when it, a bright light hits it, and it almost went black when that car blew up. Oh wow! I remember uh, the Troy uh, the Justin Bonnet incident. Well, you and I were standing down in three more. and four where it happened, and right. I I remember hearing the kablam and feeling the heat right immediately from the fire and turning around, going, "Oh crud." <laughs> And started going that direction and then c- trying to push some people back. People are just getting too close to it. They want to film it with their cell phones. Like, get out of the way, dummy. Let let people get in here because this, this man could be seriously injured or burnt, you know? Let the people that need to get in and get in there and take care of business. And yes. I, yes. I was turned away from it, but I saw the reflection of the flash in my viewfinder. That's what turned me around. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. I, I'll tell you what. I, I Fire scares the heck out of me. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I just... I, like watching that F1 driver that went through the guardrail and walk out of a wall of fire and only to have his hands burned a little bit is is incredible. That's a testament yeah. to safety. Yes. Yes. We we have, I mean, it's a lot safer than it was back in the day. But, you know, like I said, man, we, we love racing. We love all racers. We don't see anybody get hurt in a race car. Guys, check your belts. Check your safety equipment. Don't, don't think that it's okay because it may not be. And you don't want to end up in the hospital after wrecking a race car. Not not your hobby. Yeah, that's that's just the bottom line, too. And uh, we're probably going to leave it at that and uh, let you guys rest on that as far as the racing goes. And, and just, you know, don't skimp on safety. Be safe and, and have fun. Like Jim says, uh, every episode, just he's out there to have fun. But he's out there to yep. compete as well. Uh, you'll be out there next. Uh, the next race will be June 4th. And... Um, Go tighten that, go tighten that car up, and go after that double zero. And uh, we'll look forward to the next one. Uh, we'll probably get together next week, um, maybe the week after that, maybe waiting after the June fourth race, uh, and get back together with uh, you guys. But um, anything, uh, any final thoughts before we sign off? Just want to say thanks to everybody for listening, and uh, please, whatever you do, um, check us out. Uh, give us a good, good rating so we can move up the charts. We're at all your your best. Uh, podcast listening places everybody please you know listen to us uh give us some reviews uh try to help us move up the charts and and just you know let us know what you think and what we can do to improve i i've gotten a few feedback here and there and i think uh it's going to be better we're going to make this better and guys it's been fun and uh let's let's do it again in a week yeah let's uh get out to the track bring some friends let's have a good time yes sir bring people to the speedway please yeah look forward to seeing all of you there uh, until next time, next week or the week after. Well, thank you for listening. Amen. Good night. Good night.